Hi everyone, I'm Barry Stagner and this is his Channel News Break. Hong Kong's leader said she would listen to public opinion after a landslide election victory by opponents of Chinese rule amid months of sometimes violent pro-democracy unrest. Democratic candidates secured almost 90% of 452 district council seats in Sunday's poll held during a rare weekend lull in clashes with police, despite a strongly resourced and mobilized pro-establishment opposition. Hong Kong's pro-Beijing chief executive, Carrie Lam, said the government respected the results and wished the peaceful, safe, and orderly situation to continue. Quite a few are of the view that the results reflect people's dissatisfaction with the current situation and the deep-seated problems in society, Lam said. The government would listen to the opinions of the members of the public, humbly and seriously reflect upon what they said, she read in her statement. The elections brought a record turnout after six months of protest and upset wins for Democrats against heavyweight pro-Beijing op opponents greeted in some voting centers by chants of Liberate Hong Kong and Revolution Now. District councils deal with local issues such as transport, but their members also form part of the election committee for Hong Kong's chief executive. This could give them some influence over the next vote in 2022, although they account for only 117 of its 1,200 members. Democratic Party Chairman Wu Chai Wei described the election as the first step on the way to full democracy. The district election shows that the central government needs to face the demands of a democratic system, he said. Along with universal suffrage, the protesters' demands include an independent inquiry into perceived uh, police brutality. The voting ended with no major disruptions across the city of some 7.4 million people. This is the power of democracy. This is a democratic tsunami, said Tommy Chung, a former student protest leader who won a seat in the Yunlong district close to China's border. The number of seats held by the pro-democracy camp tripled and turnout was at 71 percent, almost double the number in the previous polls four years ago. Russia hopes to seal a deal to supply Turkey with more S-400 missile defense systems in the first half of next year. The head of the Russian arms exporter, Rosa Baron Export, was cited on Tuesday as saying, Such a move could further sour ties between Turkey and the United States, which has suspended Ankara from the F-35 stealth fighter jet program, in which it was a producer and buyer to punish it for buying S-400 batteries earlier this year. Washington has also warned of possible U.S. sanctions, saying the missiles are not compatible with NATO defenses, but has not yet imposed them. A senior U.S. Department official said last week that Turkey needed to get rid of the S-400s it had already bought to mend fences. But Rosa Barone Exports' Alexander Mikhev told the RIA news agency Moscow and Ankara were actively discussing Ankara taking up a position, or an option rather, in the original contract for it to receive more S-400 systems with talks focused on financial questions. We hope that in the first half of 2020, we will sign the contract documents, RIA cited uh, Makiv as saying. But I want to stress that military technical cooperation with Turkey is not limited to the supply of S-400s. We have big plans ahead. Well, an alliance between Turkey and Russia is no surprise in these last days, giving us today's reminder to keep looking up.